today we are going to paint up some squig hoppers and in this guide well let's start off right there this is more of suggestions than a guide because the one main thing I'm doing with this unit of squig hoppers is I'm painting all the squigs slightly different trying to add a little bit of variety to each squig to make them each unique and so even though I'm gonna present to you two different ways of painting squigs uh, by the time I painted 10, I used about eight or seven different versions. So I'll try to explain where I skipped colors and where I just changed it up just to, you know, make each squig a little bit more interesting. But to begin with, we are beginning on both of our squigs in this example. Uh, starting off with a base coat of Leho model color red mixed with red violet. Layer number two is flat red mixed with red violet. And you can see we're being pretty haphazard with the layers because we have to cover up that black primer. I did decide to go with black primer for this project, mainly because we have the mouth area of the squigs. We want to keep that really dark so we don't have any white primer showing through in those deep recesses. Also, we have the black robes of the goblin. Uh, however, that does mean we got to put a few extra layers of the red on since red is notoriously transparent. Um, so I have no problem adding a few extra layers. I kind of enjoy it myself, but it does mean, yes, it's going to take a little bit more time to paint that red. Next comes straight flat red, and you can see we switched to a regular number two brush now and this is where the layering begins we have our red thinned and we're slowly building it up remember red notoriously transparent so it's going to take a lot of layers especially when you have it thin but that's going to give you that smooth transition between the colors should point out that uh, because these are basic units for age of sigmar i'm not putting a super amount of detail into uh, these guys, when we get to more special characters like the Mangler Squigs, we're going to up the detail a whole lot, but I'm trying to keep things fairly basic here. And here is where our two squigs diverged. To get a little bit more of a purple tone to one of them, I'm adding a coat of GW Shade. Carlberg, Carlberg, Crimson. I really hate GW paint names. Good lord. Uh, but I'm trying to add a little bit more purple to one to once again make it a little bit more unique to change things up. So we'll go a little heavier purple on this one and the other one will keep a little bit more red. I will be using a lot of the GW shades in this project just to speed things up to get things done quicker and also to uh, play around with them because I haven't used them a whole lot and they seem to be fairly popular. So we're going to see what we can do with them in this project. Our next highlight is Vermilion and using it on both squigs. However, on our Crimson squig, uh, this is a little bit of a lighter highlight. On the non-Crimson one, this is going over a larger surface area. Our next color is Scarlet, and once again, this is where our two squigs diverge. On the Crimson squig, I'm using this as the final highlight color. So that previous Vermilion was a, a highlight, and this is a smaller highlight in a smaller area. However, on the other squig, uh, this is covering more surface area. This isn't a final highlight. This is like the first or second highlight. So it's, it's being applied on a much more broad surface because on that one, we're gonna keep adding more highlights. We're just done with this one right now to keep it a little bit darker. Back to our other squig, and we're gonna go up to orange for the highlights on this guy. So our next layer is Vallejo Orange Red. And then our final highlight color is light orange. Now for the rest of the squigs, the rest of the unit I'm not showing on camera, 
for the most part, I've used all the exact same colors that you see here that I just showed you. However, I used them in different ratios or I skipped some. So for example, on a couple of them, I may have not used vermilion and instead at the flat red stage mixed in scarlet and then did a and then returned to the guide using just straight scarlet for the highlight or i didn't go all the way up to the light orange or other things i didn't use the flat red over the same amount surface area i made it more of a, a lesser upper highlight rather than a full base coat or a, a a full highlight so just little changes to each squig makes each one unique and by the time they're all together everyone's going to say they just look red which is a good thing because it's still going to be cohesive unit visually when we get to the end next we have to paint the underbelly and we should still have some of that original red violet that we used in the first stage still here so we don't have to repaint the whole underbelly we just have to highlight it and for that i'm using some purple on both squigs For the highlights, I mixed in a little bit of pale sand and trying to make a little bit of texture on the bottom so we have our paint a little bit thicker and we're painting in straight lines. However, on our crimson squig, once again, I mixed things up a little bit. Instead of adding pale sand for the highlight mix, I added some Panzer Aces Flesh Base and applied that and now I'm using Straight Flesh Base for a secondary highlight. The underbellies is one of the areas that I just painted whatever I felt like on each squig. So some have different color flesh bases on them. Most are purple, some more are towards a khaki color. I just had fun with it and I did whatever I wanted. Moving on to the lips, and the lips are one portion where I kept uniform for the most part on all the squigs because when we add variety to the miniature there are some things that have to be uniform so it's still cohesive as a unit, but we'll get more into that into part two. I base coated the lips with Vallejo Game Color Warlord Purple and now we are applying a highlight of Warlord Purple mixed with Squid Pink. And in case you're wondering why we switched models, well, I had a problem with uh, a lot of the footage towards the end of the video. And basically, I had to repaint uh, the, our examples for this video. Hence, that's the reason why we're painting the armored up version now. And we're going to switch back and forth between the two. So, yeah, that's the bad news. The good news is you're going to get a second video because we're going to detail how to paint the armored up version of the squig hoppers as well. Next is straight squid pink, and you can see we're picking out all those little ridges on the lower lip. Now at the same time I'm painting the lips, I'm also painting the gums, uh, even though we're going to paint those a lighter color. The reason is because we still have to deal with our black primer, and the lips, since I want those a lighter color, it's going to take a couple undercoats to bring them up. So while I'm highlighting the lips, I'm also undercoating for the gums using the same color. And then our final highlight for the gums, which is already base coated with the squid pink. I've added some white to it and trying to be very careful to highlight the upper edges of those gums around the teeth so we get a nice contrast once we get the wash in after the teeth are painted. The teeth we are base coating in with a rocky sand, very carefully trying to paint around all the gums and lips. And here's one area you can see where the black primer definitely benefited uh, because that recessed area in the mouth, uh, because it's just black, it looks like just you know, a huge empty maw. And if we primered in white, trying to get a, a brush in there to darken that area or even paint that area would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. So uh, that's why I went with the black primer. I 
could have done black and then a ghosting of white above it. But uh, I already gave my reasons why I prefer black primer. So there you go. Time for our second GW wash, this time Agrax Earthshade. And we're using this to shade pretty much everything in the mouth. Very heavy coat along all the teeth and also all along the gums. So we can get a nice separation line between all the teeth and the gums and the lips. And then for the highlight, Pale Sand, and we're just doing the edges. Uh, we're not gonna add any extra highlighting to the teeth. Uh, this is a good example of an area where we are cutting corners a little bit because these are rank and file guys. Um, if this was a, a special character unit, we can definitely go in with a few extra highlights, some mixtures, but uh, as it stands, uh, because they're rank and file, just this quick one highlight is good enough. Last thing, the paint on the squig itself are all the little warts. And this is another area where I just painted basically whatever color I felt like it. I pretty much just used whatever wet paint I had on my palette. So on this one, for example, I used uniform green, the same color that I will be using on the skin eventually of the goblin. And then on another one, I used blue violet and just add a little white or pale sand or whatever I had on my palette to highlight it. And I tried to highlight some and not highlight others, just to give a little bit of variety. So once again, very little touches to make everything unique. So that's it for our squigs. In part two, we will work on the riders and go into detail on how to paint them. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Flag on the moon. How did it get there?